Hey guys, let's talk about Zen, or should I say Ryzen. Hi guys and welcome back to Back of Beyond Tech and finally, finally we can talk about Zen with some form of confidence. So I have literally 10 minutes ago, I've had enough time to go and make a cup of coffee which is off camera and calm down a little bit after watching the New Horizon event um, with Lisa Sue. So basically what happened in the New Horizon event? Well, they kind of confirmed a lot of things that we already knew that had been leaked. They didn't talk about pricing which I was kind of disappointed about. There's a few moments in the video where I thought Lisa Sue was going to mention pricing, but it never really came around to that. What we did see was some very impressive performance scores. I think you'd have to be the, the most hardcore Intel fanboy not to be impressed with what AMD have done, regardless or not whether it's taken them four years. A lot of people point to that, but I think, you know, four years is a reasonable... Um, time frame to bring a new product to, um, to market. So let's discuss um, what Lisa Sue was talking about at the New Horizon event. So obviously she was talking about their flagship chip, that eight core 16 thread part. Um, there was a few things that came out about that that are, that are absolutely locked in now. So it's an eight core part. It's running SMT or hyper threading, which gives it 16 threads. It's going to have 20 megabytes total shared cache. So I think that's um, four megs level one, eight megs level two and eight megs level three. It is going to be shipping at 3.4 gigahertz plus. Now, I don't know what the plus means. So I don't know if plus is potentially there's there's more um, space there for them to eke out. Um, 3.4 gigahertz plus might just mean that the plus is overclockability or it might be pointing towards these cherry pick chips people have talked about in the past. We also learned a little bit about how Zen works under the hood. So she was talking about some of the technologies around Zen and, and these enable Zen um, to be more efficient. So um, she talked about something called smart prefetch. So smart prefetch basically allows the Zen architecture to have the right data at the right time, if you like. So. So what it does is it will monitor the common operations and calls that certain applications you run make. Now, because this is gonna be a very predictable behavior, so for instance, if you're running, say, Premiere Pro a lot, it will, over time, and I don't know what that time frame is, it will be able to build up a picture of these, these common operators and calls that that program is making. And it can almost have that data pre-stored, if you like, it can, it, it, I'm not, I'm not going to say it can um, anticipate because it's not thinking, but it's just going to use an algorithm that will allow it to kind of, um, within a percentage, a confidence interval, go, I need to grab this at this point. And that's one of the technologies that is making Zen so fast at the moment. She then went on to talk about something called Pure Power. Uh, basically what Pure Power does is it is monitoring the temperatures and the voltages across the die. So, um, the Zen package has a um, hundred little sensors across the die. And if during some application it notices that, hey, wait a minute, we're, we're not running as hot as we could be on this package or this CPU process, they will it will up the voltage to that dynamically within a thermal threshold to, to give you better performance. So it's doing that across the entire chip architecture to give you a very balanced performance orientated and also power efficient now something else that was touched on was something called XFR or extended frequency range. So basically this is, think of it almost as, I suppose you could call it GPU boost, um, you know, for graphics cards. So the, the chip is monitoring again, it's workload um, dynamically. So if it knows that say for instance, um, it has a bit more overhead in terms of thermals, it will start to overclock the chip accordingly. Now, this feature will scale no matter what cooling solution you're using, whether it's liquid nitrogen, if you're lucky, uh, water or air more commonly. And I think that's a really cool feature and I think this is probably going to be enabled more when we move to Z270 boards for Intel as well, that you're going to have this almost sort of um, automatic overclock but on the fly. So, it's the, so the CPU is dynamically 
moving that bar of uh, clock frequency in relation to the thermal overhead. So I think that's pretty cool. So let's get to the bit that most people are interested in. What is the real world performance of this? They showed us a couple of benchmarks. So they pulled out Blender and they also did a transcode in Handbrake, both of which are very good multi-threaded um, benchmarks because they scale well across, across cores. Um, so obviously they did the same thing they've done before. They benched it against an i7-6900K. This time, however, they had Zen clocked at 3.4 gigahertz and they had the i7-6900K at stock. So 3.2 gigahertz and then whatever its boost frequency is, I think it's 3.7. And in both cases, um, the Zen chip won. Now that is really impressive. That is an amazing IPC gain. And um, it's just, I'm trying, I'm trying not to be super excited about this. I'm trying to give you guys a objective uh, review, if you like, or my thoughts on what I saw, but um, I can't help but be excited about this. I think it's great. I think, um, you know, that, that i7 6900K is a 140 watt TDP, TD, TDP part, and the Zen chip is running at 95 watts TDP, and it's still beating it. You know, that's incredible gains in IPC. And it's great for someone like me who has a multi-threaded work, work stream. So I think we can put the bugbears about Zen performance to bed. And I mean, you could, you could say that they're picking a benchmark that is going to um, be good for their product. And they are, you know, if they pick the render in Premiere Pro, they, you know, both the Zen part or the Ryzen part and the i7-6900K would be beaten by something like a 6700K because Premiere Pro is all about single thread speed. You know, the Adobe almost two years ago got rid of the, the one option that allows you to scale across all cores. So regardless of people bring up that thing about benchmarks, I think the fact that is for like for like the same test, Zen is winning. And in terms of the, the transcoding test in Handbrake, it won by five per, uh, it won by 10%, it won by five seconds. So. I think that's really impressive. Um, they also showed some some other benchmarks. So they they showed a head to head in Battlefield One at 4K ultra settings, where they had again the Zen or Ryzen part, and they had the i7 6900K, both both paired with Titan Pascal cards, and um, the Zen chip was getting a higher frame rate. I mean, not by a huge amount, but the gaming performance seems to be there. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited. I'm really, really excited. I think it would have been nice. Um, the only thing I think it would have been nice to see is that four core part. I'm not so bothered about the six core part, um, but I think that four core eight thread part is the one that a lot of people would want to see. And you know, you can't blame them for showing off their flagship desktop part. Um, that's what any company would do. But a nice aside would have been to see that four core eight thread part you know, maybe coupled with something like an RX 480 or, you know, a GTX 1080 um, in one of the popular titles today, just to put to bed that question of, is the i7 still gonna be the chip to go for bang for buck? Because we haven't heard anything about pricing yet, guys. So that's still open for debate. Um, so the one thing we do know that was confirmed is that it is launching in quarter one, 2017. What quarter one means, I don't know. Um, there's a lot of sources out there that are saying January. Um, I think maybe the end of January, um, after they've been to CES, possibly, yeah. So guys, I'm gonna stop rambling on. I think you've listened to me enough. Um, that's just what I think. So guys, if you liked the video, give the video a big thumbs up. Don't forget to comment. I love reading your comments. And don't forget to subscribe if you're enjoying the content on the channel. And I'll catch you again in another great tech video. Bye.